Let's get right into it. Number 10. The Submariner Who Said No. October 27, 1962. Soviet submarine B-59 is lurking in the Caribbean waters during the Cuban Missile Crisis. The submarine is running silent, hiding from the American Navy above. The air conditioning has failed. Inside, temperatures have hit 120 degrees Fahrenheit. The crew is literally cooking alive in a metal tube deep underwater. Carbon dioxide levels are rising. Men are fainting at their posts. And that's when the Americans start dropping depth charges. The Soviets didn't know these were practice depth charges. The Americans were trying to force the sub to surface, not destroy it. In that hot, cramped submarine, with explosions rocking the hull, the captain ordered the launch of their nuclear torpedo. This wasn't just any torpedo. It had the power of a Hiroshima bomb. If it hit the American fleet above, it would trigger World War III. But Vasily Arkhipov, the second in command, refused. Launching a nuke required three officers to agree. The captain said yes. The political officer said yes. But Arkhipov said no. He argued against launching while the submarine was battered by depth charges. Just months earlier, Arkhipov had survived a nuclear accident on another submarine where he watched his friends die from radiation. He kept his cool. He convinced the captain to surface and contact Moscow. We didn't even know about this until 2002. Arkhipov lived the rest of his life quietly, never bragging about the day he saved the world. He died in 1998, never knowing that historians would later call him the man who saved humanity. Number 9. The officer who ignored the machine. The year is 1983. The Cold War is at its peak. Lieutenant Colonel Stanislav Petrov is working a night shift at the Soviet Nuclear Early Warning Center. At exactly 12.14 a.m., every alarm in the facility starts screaming. The computer system shows five American nuclear missiles heading straight for the Soviet Union. The system says there's a 100% chance this is real. Protocol demands he inform High Command for an immediate counter-strike, but Petrov hesitates. If he reports this, Soviet leadership would have minutes to decide whether to launch their nuclear weapons. They'd likely strike first, rather than risk losing their missiles. That means thousands of nuclear warheads flying both ways. The end of civilization. But something doesn't feel right to Petrov. Why would the Americans only launch five missiles? If they wanted to start a nuclear war, they'd launch hundreds. The computer system continues screaming, still showing 100% certainty. Every second he waits could mean Soviet missiles won't launch in time, if this is real. Then he notices ground radar isn't picking up any missiles. The computer system could be wrong. Stanislav Petrov, against every protocol, against direct orders, reports it as a false alarm. Those 15 minutes of waiting revealed the truth. The Soviet satellite warning system had a bug. It mistook sunlight reflecting off clouds for nuclear missiles. Instead of being celebrated, the Soviet military punished him for ignoring protocols. He was reassigned, and his story remained hidden until after the Soviet Union collapsed. When asked later about his decision, Petrov simply said, I didn't want to be the one responsible for starting World War III. Number 8. The Technicians Who Stopped a Meltdown The reactor at Chernobyl had already exploded, but underneath, there was an even bigger problem brewing. A massive pool of water sat under the melting reactor core. If that melting core hit the water, it would create a steam explosion so powerful, it would make the first explosion look like a firecracker. The radiation from this would have made most of Europe uninhabitable. Three technicians had to go into the flooded basement of a melting nuclear reactor to find and open a valve. They waded through radioactive water up to their waist. Their flashlights barely worked because the radiation was so intense, it was affecting the batteries. The water was so dark they couldn't see their hands in front of their faces. After what felt like forever, they found the valve. They managed to drain the pool, preventing the steam explosion. But here's the twist. They survived. Two of them are still alive today. The third lived to be 65 and died of a heart attack. They saved Europe by playing the world's most dangerous game of plumbing. Number 7. The Botanist Who Fed the World Norman Borlaug grew up on a farm in Iowa. He was so good at wrestling, he paid for college by competing. This farm boy would become humanity's secret weapon against starvation. In the 1960s, we were heading straight for the biggest famine in human history. Experts were saying, the battle to feed humanity is over, and hundreds of millions will starve to death. Norman looked at wheat and decided it needed to work harder. He started breeding different types of wheat together, creating a super wheat that could grow anywhere and produce way more food. Norman's wheat was shorter, stronger, and could produce three times more grain. He shuttled between Mexico and India, growing two crops a year instead of one. It was like speed-running plant evolution. 
In just a few years, wheat production in India and Pakistan doubled. We went from everyone's going to starve to having too much food in less time than it takes to finish college. His work saved an estimated one billion people from starvation. That's like saving the entire population of North and South America combined. When he won the Nobel Peace Prize in 1970, he wasn't at some fancy party. He was out in a wheat field, working. When they called to tell him about the award, he thought it was a prank and hung up. Most people have never heard of Norman Borlaug. We know more about celebrities' breakfast choices than the man who stopped one billion people from starving. Number 6. The Epidemiologist Who Eradicated a Monster Imagine a disease so horrifying that it killed three out of ten people it infected, a virus that left survivors permanently scarred, often blind, and marked for life. This monster was smallpox, and for most of human history, it was unstoppable. It killed more people than all wars combined. In 1966, D.A. Henderson decided he was going to kill this monster for good. He was going to try to completely wipe a disease off the face of the earth. Most people thought he was crazy. Instead of trying to vaccinate everyone on Earth, he came up with something called ring vaccination. Find one case of smallpox, then vaccinate everyone that person had contact with. It's like building a wall around the virus, trapping it. Henderson negotiated a ceasefire between India and Pakistan just so his teams could vaccinate people in the border regions. He got two countries to stop shooting at each other to fight smallpox instead. His team designed a special needle that used less vaccine and didn't need refrigeration. This tiny fork-like tool, called the bifurcated needle, changed everything. By 1977, they found the last natural case of smallpox in Somalia. In the 20th century alone, smallpox killed around 300 million people. That's like wiping out the entire United States. But thanks to D.A. Henderson and his team, not a single person has died from smallpox since 1978. It's the only human disease we've ever completely erased from nature. Number 5. The geneticist who fought viruses for fun. Maurice Hilleman was basically playing Russian roulette with needles, but instead of bullets, it was viruses. While other researchers were writing grant proposals, this guy was collecting virus samples from his own kids' throats. When his daughter Gerald Lynn came down with mumps, he saw his sick daughter and thought, jackpot, at 2 a.m. while his daughter was sleeping, he snuck into her room like a medical ninja. He swabbed her throat, rushed to his lab, and started working on a vaccine. Instead of waiting for years of clinical trials, Hilleman tested his experimental vaccines on himself and his family. It worked. The strain he collected from his daughter's throat that night is still used in vaccines today. They named it the Gerald Lynn strain. Hilleman went on to develop vaccines for measles, hepatitis A, hepatitis B, chickenpox, meningitis, and pneumonia. He basically looked at every nasty virus out there and said, Fight me. Scientists today estimate that his vaccines save about 8 million lives every year. That's more lives saved than Batman, Superman, and Spider-Man combined. Yet most people have never heard of him. Number 4. The Biologist Who Disarmed a Superpower Meet Matthew Messelson, a biologist who looked at America's biological weapons program and thought this was the dumbest thing he'd ever seen. For the cost of a fancy dinner, you could brew up enough deadly bacteria to kill everyone in a small city. Biological weapons were basically the dollar store version of nuclear weapons. Any country could make them. Meselson went straight to Henry Kissinger, the president's right-hand man, and laid out a terrifying scenario. If every country had these weapons, all it would take is one accident, one leak, one crazy person, and everyone would be done for. Meselson used pure logic to destroy every argument for keeping them. When the military said they needed them for deterrence, he asked how they could deter someone when they could make the same weapons in their basement. When they said they needed them for defense, he pointed out that germs don't check passports. They kill everyone, including us. His arguments were so compelling that President Nixon, not exactly known for being a peacenik, completely shut down America's biological weapons program in 1969. Messelson then helped write the Biological Weapons Convention, telling the whole world to stop trying to kill each other with germs. One scientist, armed with nothing but facts and logic, convinced the most powerful country in the world to give up an entire category of weapons. Number 3. The Investigator Who Found the Pump Handle In London, 1854, the streets were filled with sewage, garbage, and things you don't want to think about. In just one week, over 127 people in one neighborhood dropped dead from cholera. Back then, doctors thought diseases spread through bad air. They figured all that stink must be killing people. 
but Jon Snow wasn't buying it. While everyone else was holding handkerchiefs to their noses, Snow was making a map and marking every single death with a dot. The dots revealed something incredible. Almost every death clustered around one water pump on Broad Street. A brewery near the pump had zero deaths because the workers only drank beer. A workhouse also had no deaths because they had their own well. When Snow told officials his theory about contaminated water, they laughed at him, but he kept pushing until they removed the pump handle. The deaths stopped immediately. They later discovered a baby's diaper had been washed in a cesspit just three feet from the well. The cesspit was leaking cholera-infected water straight into the drinking supply. One dirty diaper caused over 600 deaths. Snow didn't just save those people. He invented epidemiology, the science of tracking disease patterns. That's all for today. I'll be making similar videos in the future. Subscribe to see them.